Let's talk about some challenges in engineering education. So with the increasing demand for STEM graduates, class sizes are increasing, uh, but there's a lot of uh, funding is essentially decreasing. So there's also a disconnect between the current traditional engineering curriculum and new technology and skills that industry requires. And due to the rapid rate at which this change occurs, the, it's very difficult to keep curriculum material up to date with exercises and examples. Uh, textbook examples quickly become outdated. And it's already uh, hard enough for instructors to help students bridge a gap between theory taught in class and the real world, so the need to keep class content fresh with relevant and current examples that students can relate to um, and how to apply the theory they're being taught while keeping students motivated and engaged in the material. There's also um, an increasing breadth of expectations. Engineers now not only need to be experts in their own fields, but the lines are getting blurred between disciplines. So they also need to have an understanding of a broad scope of other areas. They need to be kept abreast of emerging technology, such as green energy, hybrid vehicles, all on top of an already heavy course content. So there are trade-offs to be made. So how to teach students enough theory, but also give them that practical experience. Do you set open-ended problems which mimic real life, although you only have one uh, semester to teach within? Uh, you need to evaluate each student individually, uh, but in the workplace, um, projects are often a group effort. and traditional lectures versus active classrooms. So how about in industry? So engineering products are getting increasingly complex and intricate and organizations are looking at multi-domain systems. So just take a look at cars for example. They're becoming increasingly complex and the line between the electronic and mechanical systems is blurred. Today's vehicles are essentially complex mechatronic systems. There's also green engineering, turning wind and water energy into electricity, and hybrid and electric vehicles that use alternative fuel sources, and there are increasingly more advanced controls in everything we use. So given this trend, the question is, how do we build and test these multi-domain systems? So traditional modeling techniques are no longer effective and they have become inadequate and obsolete. The organizations are now turning to physical modeling and industry is crying out for graduates um, with physical modeling skills. Now students need to be prepared to meet these new industry demands. So what is physical modeling? So also called model-based design or model-based engineering, it's the physics-based software modeling of systems. So instead of modeling equations of system, it is possible to directly model the system itself. Because the models have the physical laws associated with them, for example, current, voltage, resistance, mass, velocity, direction, or friction, and this helps to make the connection uh, between theory and reality. Um, so when used in industry, uh, it shortens and improves the engineering design cycle. Rather than build and test physical prototypes, physical modeling is much faster, uh, cheaper, and safer. For example, um, with a new car design. And this is why there's a need for uh, people and new graduates with these physical modeling skills. So on the education side, uh, the physics is already embedded into the models. So educators can focus on the application of theory instead of learning tools. Once students understand the basics, they can apply the knowledge and quickly extend and extrapolate to more complex real world applications within a much shorter period of time.
So here at MapleSoft, we have uh, one of our tools, MapleSim, which is the multi-domain physical modeling and simulation platform that lets students build and interact with engineering systems to connect uh, the rigor of theory to physical systems that they can understand. The MapleSim is unique because the models are based directly on the rigorous governing laws of physics, and it's built upon Maple, our powerful symbolic computation engine. This means that while students are modeling systems, rather than modeling the equations of systems, all the system level equations are still easily accessible by both instructors and students. And using these equations, they can carry out professional and in-depth analyses that are traditionally not possible in the classroom. The students can gain insight from these complex engineering models, letting them see what they are learning about in the classroom really does matter and has an application in the real world. As I mentioned, uh, Maple is a rich and interactive environment for describing, analyzing, visualizing, and solving mathematical problems. So like static and abstract equations that you get in a textbook, Maple brings those concepts to life with multiple analysis options. So in the following demo, I'll show you a combination of Maple documents and how they can be used alongside Maple Sim models to demonstrate a few engineering principles. In this case, we'll focus on kinematics and dynamics, as we mentioned previously, and I'll go through a couple of different topics uh, within that subheading. So first of all, we'll start off in Maple. Um, and here I have a Maple worksheet in orbital mechanics. So as we scroll through, we can see that we have topics built up um, so, for example, angular momentum. The students would be able to see the equations and what the theories can be explored uh, within this topic. Central forces, Newton's law of universal gravitation, this starts to become more interactive than what a student would see uh, within a textbook. So for now, it's just building up uh, the various equations that they need to know. When we get to this part, this section, uh, we can start to um, look at, for example, here we're exploring the eccentricity. Um, so we're looking at a traje trajectory uh, of something in orbit at this point. And we can play around um, with the eccentricity. So if I use the slider, so at an eccentricity of zero, and we animate, we can see our visualization here. Um, we can visualize essentially the eccentricity of orbit. And if I move it to give it an eccentricity of 1, our parabola changes and helps us gain a better understanding of what would be going on. Now as we continue on through each of these worksheets, it continues to explain more in depth and more details of each principle and then starts to apply that to a MapleSim model, um, giving the students a problem to work with that they can apply to a physical model. So in this case, uh, the problem statement, a satellite enters an orbit 500 kilometers above Earth, its velocity at this point is 36,900 kilometers per hour perpendicular to the Earth. Now what we have here is um, a solution, the way to work through the solution, and how to generate that kind of model within MapleSim. So what the components would look like, where to find them, 
how to connect those components and add the various parameters step by step. So at this point, if I jump into MapleSim, here we have the orbital mechanics model built. And here a student would be able to verify if their model, um, which they can also build, matches um, what it should look like. And there's a description of the model and how to explore the model with the correct equations. So if we actually run the simulation at this point, we hit play, uh, we can see the equations generating down here. And it just takes a few moments. We can open up the analysis window. Uh, we get a visualization that I can run. Uh, we can see the orbit, and at the same time, get this running. Here I can see the trage trajectory of my orbit. If I jump into this plot, I can see my angle, position, and speed over time. as the animation continues. So I jump back into Maple. Um, so as I said again, this uh, section of the worksheet essentially would talk a student through how to build that model uh, for themselves and end up um, with the same model, what their results would be expected to look like, um, on what kind of values they would expect to have. So this can be edited um, in any which way, whether you want to show what the answers would be or whether you would want them to not have that information. Um, but it can be customized at, at, at will or how you would want to present that information. To show, so to show another example, at this point, I'm going to jump into our work and energy. Go back to the top. So again, we have the same kind of layout. Um, demonstrating each principles. Um, and this time we have uh, a plot that I can animate. Um, so here we're showing um, interactive work. So we have this little bar graph following along as our plot increases and decreases in work. So we have these little interactive elements scattered throughout the, the worksheets that just help add that visualization element um, to each example. We can also show video examples to dem demonstrate concepts. Scrolling. Further plots can be added. Um, some of these are images taken from textbook-like examples. And again, demonstrating these examples within uh, MapleSim. So with a problem statement and then how to solve through um, those problems within uh, MapleSim by first building a model and then extrapolating information from that model. So for this one it is the uh, braking vehicle. So if I jump into MapleSim, I can show the braking car. I can run that simulation. And it shows the, the, the worksheet shows the same again of how to uh, drag and drop each of the components into MapleSim uh, to build up this same model um, with the description of running the simulation, uh, what plots would be, uh, would be graphed, and how you would extrapolate the information from those plots to 
to pull out your solutions. So if we Play. So we've got the braking car. So I'm going to run it again. Uh, we can see these are running. And here I have my probe set so that if I use my probe along any point on the graph, I get the exact value um, at any point. So for example, uh, the student is looking for a solution if the car begins to apply its brakes 20 meters away from the edge of the bridge, how much force needs to be constantly applied. Uh, so using the the, um, the simulation and um, the plots that they would be um, they would be generating here, they would be they would have all of the information. They would need to solve those equations. So we'll do one last worksheet. Um, let's look at projectile motion. Uh, so again, this one goes through the same kind of um, idea of projectile motion, motion analysis, sets up the student to learn each of the necessary equations. Here we have a slider tool to play around with what those different plots look like with playing around with height, angle, and velocity of different projectile trajectories. And same with here, we have one static and one dynamic. Graph. And again, we go into the example with MapleSim. So this one has, I believe, three examples. So one has a tennis serve with a problem statement um, broken down into three different questions. Um, and again, showing the different plots. The Maple Sim simulations of how to build those. Our second one is a, and I get to it, a, um, a tennis serve with drag, so it adds that extra physics, so that one's not in here, that might be our last one. Um, so our second one is target shooting, um, so an air rifle, and again has those different problem statements to solve through. And then I believe our last one is here, one step further, incorporating drag. Um, and so we can add that into our MapleSim model um, with one last equation um, of adding the drag coefficient to our tennis serve. And again, that, that one is not um, shown here to uh, build the Maple, MapleSim uh, model, but is included um, in the the package, and I will show you those within MapleSim, so we can run that. And it, here again is the step by step of finding the solutions. And so these are just examples of ways that the Maple and MapleSim can be combined. Um, for you to use in your classroom for whatever concepts you're trying to teach your students and can use as a starting point. So let's see. So here if we imagine there's the, the net, the tennis ball, and there's the serve. Assuming we hit the net. And we're just looking at simple what are the positions. So actually if I run that again. It goes so quickly. Oh, 
Well, you got my point, but you can see the um, the position over time of where the tennis ball would be. But as I was saying, these are a starting point um, of what kind of material can be used within Maple and then transferring that to Maple Sim. So if I jump back into So as we've seen from these examples, uh, MapleSim brings clear value to students and instructors. So for students, MapleSim brings theory to life. It gives them essentially that sandbox for reality uh, where they can test out ideas and build intuition um, that can usually take years in industry to develop. Uh, they can test their understanding of concepts by building up those models uh, playing around with parameters and variables to see their effect. And it's quick and easy to extend or modify a model and then rerun those simulations. So for instructors, it saves time. Uh, they can deliver in-depth coverage of multiple engineering disciplines by turning from uh, extensive lesson plans to interactive models, which are easy to update and reuse. And instructors can focus on the most important concepts and reinforce them in a meaningful way through modeling and simulation. And since MapleSim is a tool used for complex modeling and simulation in industry, instructors can be assured that they're bringing added value to their students' resumes for placement after graduation. So those... Um, basically packages of the uh, Maple worksheets and um, MapleSim models are available on our website. Uh, they're a comp compilation um, broken down into different engineering topics and I'll show you where those are in a moment. Uh, they're meant to be meant to provide instructors with an idea of what can be done using our products and can be used as a starting point. Uh, we also have our MapleSim model gallery, uh, which can be accessed on our website. Uh, this is a compilation of MapleSim models, not necessarily geared towards education. Uh, it's more um, pro, but can be applied um, to engineering education if you're looking for more examples of models to be used in the classroom. Um, and they can be used to, sh to motivate students of those real-world applications. And finally, our recorded webinars. So webinars will provide ideas and inspiration for using Maple and MapleSim uh, in the classroom. So just like this one, all of our webinars do get posted uh, to our website. So I'll show you where those are. So the first one is our engineering fundamentals page. So here I am in the kinematics and dynamics section, which we talked through a few, a few of those examples today. Uh, so we did work in energy, orbital mechanics, and which was the last one we did, uh, projectile motion. So if you go into any of these, so orbital mechanics, Uh, download this free learning module. There's a whole package of um, the Maple worksheet, Maple models, um, videos, um, and there's more examples than the ones I went through too. Um, and for future webinars, I will also be doing more on each of the other topics uh, covered here. As for our MapleSim model gallery, there are hundreds of models available in here in various different categories uh, from machine design, vehicle engineering, aerospace, and so forth. Um, so please explore um, the various models within here. As you can see, there are many of them. And finally, our recorded webinars section of our webpage. And I suggest if you head over here, um, so if you hit education and research and hit search, which I already did already, 
um, but that brings up any education related resources for you. Um, so Maple Training for Educators, um, Maple 2018 Education Research. A lot of them are going to be Maple based, um, but also searching for Maple Sim in there as well will give you uh, resources to look through in terms of webinars.